going back to the very beginning of the MCU, we have a Keystone event, and that event is Tony Stark becoming Iron Man. So he's forced to build these weapons for an organization, and that organization was the Ten Rings. And there was this wonderful character we really wanted to do something with someday, and that was Shang-Chi. When they announced us the movie, I was really, really excited. Kind of tongue-in-cheek, I ended up tweeting Marvel, hey, are we gonna talk or what? So I'm very glad I did that. He's so intense as this character. Shang-Chi was made for Simu, and I could feel his passion for it. The backstory of Shang is really unique and that he discovered that his father was this evil overlord. The rings gave our family power. He's brought back into his father's world and has to deal with coming face to face with him again. And this is a much meaner and more hardened father. <laughs> and then crazy stuff happens after that. <laughs> it was time for you to take your place by my side. That's not gonna happen. My heart was definitely in this project. It feels in line with everything I believe in. And it is a crazy, wild, giant ride that we're gonna go on. Hold on, everybody! Welcome back everyone, this is my new Shang-Chi trailer video and easter eggs, Marvel just released even more new footage, and Kevin Feige just kind of blowing up everything you knew about Iron Man's origin in the MCU. So we'll break it all down, if you're brand new to the channel be sure to subscribe to get all the videos, there's a whole bunch of Marvel What If episodes starting in a couple weeks, I'll be doing videos for all those episodes. Very different spin on Iron Man's origin we're going to see during that series, just because it's playing on this big trope of the multiverse and what happened at the end of the Loki series with Kang, Loki and Sylvie. Thank you very much Sylvie. But the big thing here is just Kevin Feige talking about the connection between Iron Man, Tony Stark, the Mandarin, the Ten Rings organization, and the truth behind his origin in the MCU. So some of you may have actually been thinking about this since way back a couple years ago when they released the Iron Man 3 one-shot, All Hail the King, and revealed that there was a real Ten Rings organization led by the real version of the MCU Mandarin, kind of making you rethink the events of the first Iron Man movie just a little bit. But if it wasn't clear, what Kevin Feige is confirming here is that when Raza, the character from Iron Man 1, ordered the hit on Tony Stark's military convoy to steal his new Stark Tech weapons, it was on the orders of the real Mandarin, Shang-Chi's father, Wen Wu. It was implied that he was working with Obadiah Stane. They're basically saying that Obadiah Stane was working with the real Mandarin and Raza was just the intermediary for that relationship. And according to what he says, even as far back as them making that first Iron Man movie more than 10 years ago now, they were trying to find a way to do Shang-Chi's character, but at the time it sounds like they hadn't quite figured that out, they hadn't decided to just make him the Mandarin's son and do the Mandarin that way. Here's a deep cut too, if you've been following all the Marvel movies since their original Comic Con when they were hyping it up back in, I think it was 2006, there was a special MCU panel that Kevin Feige did where he was hyping up the fact that they were going to be making their own movies, they were going to do an Iron Man movie, they were doing an Incredible Hulk movie, and I think way back at that Comic Con panel they may have even implied during the Q&A session that they were planning on building up to the first Avengers movie. Characters I named that we that we work are working on currently and you put them all together there's no coincidence that that may someday equal the Avengers. I think uh... I don't think they officially announced that Marvel Phase 1 Avengers movie plan until after the first few movies had actually been released. But in the early days of the MCU, when they were doing these very early first Comic Con panels, Kevin Feige was much more open to hyping up their future plans than he is now. Like you talk to him now and he tries to give nothing away. But if you watch his early interviews for some of those early Marvel Phase 1 movies, he's like, oh yeah, you, we are building up to something really big. And it was all him hyping up the Avengers movie. But you may remember Kevin Feige talking about how during that first Comic-Con panel, if you had been there in the crowd, you would have heard him say that they were going to use the Mandarin as the main villain of that first Iron Man movie. Now this was a couple years before they'd actually made the movie, before anything ever came out. And famously, they pivoted hard on that by the time they actually started making it, and they made Obadiah Stane the main villain and changed some of the Ten Rings plot, making them feel more like a terrorist cell, and tied it a little bit more to the whole Bush administration war in Iraq, war in Afghanistan feel, that made it feel a little bit more timely when it was released, because it was right at the tail end of all that. 
So just based on his comments in this new video, Kevin Feige is basically saying that their original idea for that first Iron Man movie was that the real Mandarin of the MCU would have originally been responsible for creating Iron Man, for setting in motion the sequence of events that would lead to Tony Stark becoming Iron Man, which makes sense. I mean, he's one of the biggest classic Iron Man comic book villains. If you remember the Michael Keaton Batman movies, the Tim Burton Batman movies, it's a very Joker Batman origin situation. They even called that out during that first Michael Keaton Batman movie. It's an old trope of superhero comics where the main villain winds up inadvertently creating his own worst enemy in the hero. And now, way down the sacred timeline of the MCU, many years later, thank you very much Loki, Sylvie, and Kang, they're just using the Shang-Chi movie to clarify retroactively that yes, it was the real Mandarin behind all this the whole time. Kevin Feige and Marvel do this all the time with the newer Marvel movies, using newer movies like Avengers Endgame to recontextualize old movies and make them seem even better in retrospect when you rewatch them. Like all the Dark World scenes from the time travel heist in Avengers Endgame, they make the Thor The Dark World movie seem even better when you go back and rewatch it now. Now I'd argue that the first Iron Man movie is still one of the best Marvel movies of all time so far, but after the Shang-Chi movie, now you'll be able to go back and rewatch that and some of the events around his origin will have new meaning. This is also the way Marvel connects the future really weird, really different movies and characters to the older movies and characters, everything that came before. Tom Holland's Spider-Man is another really good example of that in the MCU. He was around for all the big Marvel Phase 1 stuff, the Infinity Saga of movies, and he'll be here for all the new Marvel Phase 4, Phase 5, X-Men, Fantastic Four stuff as well. So he's a bridge between the past, present, and the future of the MCU. In Shang-Chi is just another way of showing how important Iron Man is to the foundation of the MCU and how everything is connected. How Tony Stark might be dead in this reality in present day, but he's still very much connected to all the new stuff. I also just did a video about the connection between Kang and Iron Man in the MCU because Kang is like the next big Thanos level threat in Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5. Inside Kang's study where he keeps his most prized possessions, if you look around, he actually keeps one of Iron Man's helmets in the line of sight of his desk near the entryway. Notice how there are no other Avengers props anywhere in here. It's just Iron Man. He's the only character that he seems like he's fixated on. I'll add a link for that video at the end of this and down in the description because the connections between Kang and Iron Man characters go a little bit deeper than that. There's a reason Kang is so fixated on Iron Man particularly. But there'll be a lot more Iron Man Easter eggs and callbacks like that during the Shang-Chi movie, so I'll point those out when the movie gets released later this year. There's also a bunch of new footage that you see during this trailer too. You see footage of him training with Michelle Yeoh's character before what seems like the big final battle of the movie when you see his father, the Mandarin, come back with his army to attack these monks in this village. There are more new scenes from the fight that they worked into this. You can see behind the smaller temple where they're fighting here is the lake separating that special door that all these monks in Michelle Yeoh's character seem like they're protecting. She said that she is the protector of an ancient city during the movie. So that's why a lot of people are like, maybe she's the great protector dragon. Maybe she turns into a dragon during the movie. There was some leaked footage that got out. I can't put it in this trailer here, but it's just actual footage of the Great Protector dragon during the movie. You see the Mandarin looking out at the lake and you see the dragon come bursting out of it. There's also some separate footage that shows Michelle Yeoh's character standing in a lineup with Shang-Chi, his sister, Katie, the other monk characters, having their big gunslinger standoff moment with the Mandarin's army when they first show up, before the battle actually starts. The whole thing with them teasing what might be behind this door, this ancient city that they keep referring to. In the comics, it was really just the McLuhan spaceship that was trapped inside this mountain where it had crashed thousands and thousands of years ago. They were an ancient race of space dragons, so it was just advanced hypertech. So it would be like them protecting a version of Odin's treasure vault. But I'm assuming because they've already changed so much about the backstory of the Ten Rings of Power themselves in the MCU, whatever's behind this door is also going to be a little bit different too. There's also more new footage of the big battle here where you see a bunch of tiny dragons carrying one of the Mandarin's men into the sky and start ripping him apart. Still not totally 100% on whether or not this is going to be the MCU version of the McLuhan's. There's also more footage of the Mandarin flashbacks. You can see him using the power of the Ten Rings to shield himself, which is actually new. We've only seen him in the other trailers using them for attack powers. I think the whole idea with the Ten Rings of Power in the MCU is that they're going to evolve their power the same way they evolved Thor's powers. Like you see him in the first Thor movie, he uses Mjolnir for basic attacks, flying around, lightning attacks. By the time they get to Thor Ragnarok, they completely recontextualize how his powers work. You find out he's way more powerful than you thought, just because he never fully understood how his powers worked. Then by Avengers Infinity War, he gets the boss level upgrade in Stormbreaker and becomes the most powerful version of himself. 
So don't be surprised if something similar happens with Shang-Chi's arc during the Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5 movies many years down the road after a couple of sequel movies in his franchise. We'll see if they try to pull a joke like they did during Thor Ragnarok with his hammer, like what are you Shang-Chi, the god of rings? It also sounds like by the end of this movie, he will also become the new protector of this ancient city. So I'm curious now to see what's actually inside what they're calling this ancient city and if it's going to be used as part of the overall plot of Marvel Phase 4 and Marvel Phase 5, the same way they did with Wakanda during the Black Panther movie. A lot of you have also asked if they're going to introduce a new version of Iron Fist during these new Shang-Chi movies. It's totally possible. That feels like it would be the place to introduce a new version of Iron Fist if you're going to introduce him in the MCU. But everybody post all your theories in the comments below. What do you think is behind this giant secret door? What will happen is there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up next week. The Suicide Squad movie is coming out, so I'll be doing some Easter egg videos for that. The Marvel What If episodes are also starting in a couple weeks, so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of those. Everyone click here to learn about the Spider-Man version of Doctor Strange in that new Marvel What If trailer. And click here for my new Loki video about how Iron Man is connected to Kang the Conqueror in the MCU. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.